All right, so we're gonna do the brakes, uh, front brakes here on a 92 Ford Ranger four wheel drive. The hardest part about this brake job is you gotta pull the rotors off, which means that the bearings have to be repacked and take care of all that business here. You could use the same process to replace the bearings with brand new and the uh, inner seal. So I'm just doing the rotors and brakes here on the pads on here. So here's how you get the caliper off. You just uh, push these pins through just try to tap on the metal parts, push the pins right through on both sides, top and bottom. Try not to jam up the rubber parts. You can replace these pins, but I've re reused them over and over again, or no problem. You want to have the tabs from the pins uh, lock in to the flat metal parts on a uh, caliper bracket when you go to put them back together. Make sure they get those tabs can lock on there. Now you can compress the, the piston cup and push the fluid back up into the reservoir just with a screwdriver pry on that. Makes the, makes the job easier to get the caliper off, just pulls right off after this. If you can't force it back in there, you can use a C-clamp once you get it apart. This usually works pretty good here. Uh, the Ranger's got a nice place to set the caliper out of the way, right up on top of the spring. So there's the C-clip on the drive shaft. I just use a couple flat screwdrivers to push that C-clip, that C-clip loose, and then pry it off the flat end of the screwdriver. Comes right off. Yours might be different if you have automatic locking hubs. These are manual hubs. Now you need this, this socket tool, I'll show you a picture later, to get this apart. If you don't have this tool, don't try this job, you'll never get it back together again, even if you give it apart, because you won't be able to torque it down properly. So this is the outer nut. It's flat on both sides. Then you have a washer here that's got holes all the way around on it. And it's got a uh, foot that rides in a slot on the shaft, on the spindle and the, the pin on the inner nut sticks through one of those holes there and keeps it from turning around. So that when you set the torque on the bearings, it stays that way. So this one's a little, this one's got 170,000 miles on it, so we'll move it up, gotta use the tool to wind that off the rest of the way, no big deal. It's just hard to do with your greasy hands. Pull off this uh, outer roller bearing here and inspect it. You're going to have it all clean and shiny and reuse it, or you can use, reuse a brand new one. It's up to you. Here's this rotor we're going to replace, and then the back there is the seal and the inner bearing. You take both of those out. So here's how you get this seal out without hurting it. Stick a flat blade screwdriver in a little slot behind this wheel, give it a little twist as you go around. The seal pops right out without damage. Now you're going to clean all your parts with some kerosene or parts cleaner. I use kerosene. Dissolves the grease real easy. So I'll sit here and clean all the parts. The bearings, the seal, all the washers, a little nylon brush. You wouldn't want to use a metal brush of some sort and get a piece of metal jammed into the bearing. I'd ruin it quick. A little nylon brush, wipe it all off, inspect the spindle. Like I said, this truck's got 170,000 miles on it. These bearings are I replaced about 70,000 miles ago. I think since that time I've taken them all apart and replaced the brakes once, so I've repacked them a couple times. I'm going to reuse them again. So this is how you pack the bearings, whether they're new ones or your nice clean old ones. Put that bearing grease in your hand and you press it into the 
bearing assembly until it comes out around the cage at the top. Then you know it's got grease all the way through it. Yep, pack that bearing with grease. So here's the other side of the truck. You can see here that the brake pad uh, retaining clip is gone and the pad spun around on the rotor and it's, this is what led me to do this brake job. But the job's the same on both sides. So here you go, this is where the seal rides up on the spindle right there. That's why I lubricate it all up with grease. And then uh, when I'm done with the job, there's no void anywhere between that seal and the outer bearing nut for any moisture to trap. I fill the whole thing with grease. This is where this uh, inner bearing rides. Okay, so we put that inner bearing in our new rotor. We're gonna reuse our seal right here. Just put it in that square, tap it in. After you set it all in square, all the way around, tap it down. Then you can uh, use a hard punch or a large screwdriver to tap against the uh, outside flange where it goes against the rotor right there nice and hard. Make sure it's all sealed down tight, stays right in there. Perfect. So in order to do the road run this vehicle, you've got to pull this uh, hub off and you do the, the these bearings. So your rotor goes on, now here goes your outer bearing all packed and cleaned and packed and ready to go in there. So now here's this uh, the inner nut with the little pin that sticks out, put that on there. Now we're going to look at how tight do you make the bearings. So, the book will tell you 35 foot pounds, then spin the rotor in both directions to lubricate all the parts and spread that grease around in there, and then set that uh, inner nut to 16 inch pounds. Well, 16 inch pounds, if you could measure it, if you had an inch pound torque wrench that would go that low, measure it, it's finger tight. Five foot pounds, and we'll spin it in both directions so we can spread the grease around in there. Just take up the slack a little bit. I don't want to crush anything. Roll them around. Now we spread the grease out evenly over all the roller bearings and races. They're going hand tight. All right. Perfect. Good as brand new. Those bearings will go another 50,000 miles at least. No play in it. It's all in there perfectly. Now you're going to put this uh, washer with the holes. So make sure that that inner nut doesn't turn. Now the outer nut goes on. You're going to use this uh, tool that you bought for 14 bucks uh, to torque this nut down to a 150 foot pounds. That's why I say you can't just make up a tool or use a, a hammer and a screwdriver to try and get that off there. You won't, you won't be able to do the job right. So you won't need that one tool. You need a torque wrench. I'm sure you have one of those. If you don't, go buy one at Harbor Freight. You're cheap. Click, 150 foot pounds. There you go. So now the rest of the parts go on there according to the manual. No trouble. There's your C clamp if you need it. And here's the special socket. You gotta have this socket. It's got these four castle looking things inside right here to, to put that nut on. That's what you gotta have. Alright, so we're gonna make this old truck uh, keep on going. Next time I'm gonna do the rear brakes and make a little 10 minute video on that. So there you go.